I'm Mr. And I'm Miserous. Marys. And we are interwoven with God. Today, we're going to discuss the power of the tongue in marriages. So many times we say and do things without even thinking about them. And it brings a lot of harm on our spouses. And in that moment, we're thinking about ourselves. But that's not why you're in your marriage. You're in your marriage to think about God and your spouse. So today, as I stated, we'll go over some uh, things that you can apply in your marriage, things that we have learned, things that we are learning um, that will benefit your marriage in a greater way. Such as um, one thing that I've learned is, again, God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he's given us a spirit of power, a love, sound mind. God has given us self-control. And I have had to learn how to control this here. Not always saying things that I feel, not always saying things that I think is right, because you can say something that you think is right and it's wrong. Or you can say something that you think is right and it does not connect with your spouse. There's a scripture in the Bible that says everything is lawful but not expedient. Meaning, I don't have to say what I think all the time. It may be right, but it's just the wrong time to say it. And we have to be mindful of what we release out of our mouth because we can really tear down Mm -hmm. our spouses and that's not going to help them fulfill purpose at all. No, no, you're right, baby, because um, husbands, um, what good What good is it for me to get my point across at the same time that I'm constantly belittling my wife mm-hmm. or, or making you feel horrible about you because I just need to prove that I'm right in what I'm saying? That does no good because that leaves that leaves your wife uh, emotions torn, heartbroken, right. and, and and just and just hurt and upset, and and it puts her in a place to where she can't receive from you because you have just torn her down. Mm-hmm. So, what good is it to prove your point and say all these words and belittle her and make her feel less than your spouse? Less than your wife, less than your equal. Mm-hmm. Uh, the sword of the spirit is the word of God, and Jesus tells us that those that live by the sword will die by the sword. Mm-hmm. So that point tells us that uh, if you speak evil upon your spouse or your mate, that a uh, bad words that that contradict the word of God, that evil will hunt and chase you down and mm-hmm. find you and cause destruction in your life and in your marriage and we don't want to do that and so that's why relationship with the holy spirit is very important because relationship with the holy spirit will allow the holy spirit to counsel you Mm -hmm. and tell you hey you shouldn't have said it like this or you you shouldn't have done it like this and it will be presented in a way and then you can come back and you can ask your mate for forgiveness Mm -hmm. you know and and you don't want to let pride stop you from doing that Pride is not a fruit of the spirit. It's of the flesh. So I will never be the one to say, okay, I'm not sorry. I don't apologize. I'm not going to apologize. But you have to take counsel from the Holy Spirit and he will instruct you on how you should apologize, what you should say, how you should say it in presentation, everything. It is. And as you stated, take counsel from the Holy Spirit. Now, there may be some that's viewing that may be wondering, what do you mean take counsel from the Holy Spirit? You may not have that relationship with the Holy Spirit. And this will be a good moment to just confess that Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. Amen. Invite Jesus Christ into your heart because he died for our sins so that we would no longer be held captive or in bondage to any kind of sin, which Mm -hmm. is death. That's all sin is. God gave us freedom. Mm -hmm. And when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, then you ask, Holy Spirit, come into my life. Jesus, I receive the Holy Spirit. I receive you. Come into my life. Mm -hmm. Help me. Because Jesus promised 
that when he left, he would bring back our comforter. Yes. He would send our comforter. And our comforter is the Holy the Spirit. Spirit. And we need him. Mm-hmm. Even in an argument, you can hear the Holy Spirit. You have a relationship with him. You can hear the Holy Spirit say, don't say that. Mm-hmm. And there have been many times that I have heard the Holy <laughs> Spirit say, don't say that. And I've said it anyway. And then I go off and the Holy Spirit is so gentle with me that he says, I told you not to say that. Mm -hmm. Now, then I have to go and repent. I have to ask God for forgiveness. And I have to pull back that idle word that I spoke into my husband. Mm -hmm. I have to go into the spirit realm and pull down that word because God told me that he gave me the power to root out. Mm-hmm. That that's not like him. Yeah. He gave me that authority. So anytime I speak something in my husband that's not right, then I have to go back. That's my fault. It's not my husband's fault. I can't say, well, you provoked me to do that. No, mm-hmm. because you have self-control. Mm-hmm. Now, people can provoke you, mm-hmm. but are you going to be the kind of woman or man that's going to allow somebody to make you make decisions about your life. Does that make sense? (laughs) Are you going to be the kind of person that gives that person that much power Mm -hmm. to make you do wrong all the time? Yeah. Yeah. You have to be more careful and you have to stand in your God given authority Mm -hmm. and be who God has called you to be. And that is a woman of self-control, a man of self-control. Amen. Stand up. Stand up. That's Mm -hmm. exactly right. And, uh, uh, when you ask for the Holy Spirit to come, it's not a ground shaking experience, but what it is, is, is heaven comes to you yes. and lives on the inside, inside of, you. of you. And that, that quiet, still voice that you hear that says, maybe you shouldn't have said it like that. Yeah. Maybe you should say this. That's the Holy Spirit is a gentleman. There have been times me and my wife have been in heated fellowship and I've said some things and um, at the moment I, did, I, 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 didn't, I didn't feel like I was wrong. I didn't feel like I was sorry. Uh, I said what was right. Mm-hmm. And then, <laughs> and then, then not moments later, the Holy Spirit says, hey, you could have said it like this. Mm-hmm. I think you need to go and apologize. And what I'll do is because my wife means more to me than anything, I'll go and I'll go and make that right. You know, and, 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 and the Holy Spirit will show you where maybe you might have been in a in, in not major area, but a slight area, mm-hmm. but slight enough to where it might have, have damaged your spouse. And so we, we don't want to damage spouses. Right. What we want to do is we want to lift our spouses up mm-hmm. and and we don't have to say everything that we think right we do not have to do that because if if your wife your husband has the holy spirit sometimes you ain't even got to say nothing they will just voluntarily come back to you am i correct baby they will voluntarily come back to you and say hey baby i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i I, I shouldn't have said that i didn't mean it you know, because sometimes we get caught up in emotions and everything. Mm-hmm. And remember, the Holy Spirit will talk to you about you. We said this last week, did we That's not? Right. That the Holy Spirit will counsel you about you. Oh, yeah. He will not sit up and talk about your wife. Mm-hmm. Now, the enemy will sit up and will you take counsel? He will sit up there and help you bash your he spouse. Does. Won't he do it? He'll help. Both of y'all be over there bashing each other. And he's sitting up there back there laughing, laughing. but he won't laugh when you see counsel from That's the Holy right. Spirit and y'all That's come right. together and y'all be one. That's right. You, you shut the enemy down when you do it God's way. He has no power. And remember, uh, Matthew 12 and 36 says that every idle word that you speak, you will be held accountable mm. for it on the day of judgment. So you don't want to get before our great judge and say, mm. and he asked you, why did you say yeah. this about your wife on this particular day? Mm. And it'll flash before you. And that's when the gnashing of the teeth, because you mm. could have, you could have pulled that word back, you know, that's right. you could have pulled that back. And instead you chose to be prideful 
and allow your spouse to hurt wow. and allow those words to go out. Remember, Proverbs 18 and, and 21 says that death and life are in the power, in the power of the, of the tongue. tongue. Mm-hmm. So we do, do, do we want to live in death? No, we don't. Do we want to live in life? Yes, we do. Jesus Christ came so that we may have life and life more abundantly. Amen. Your your marriages your marriage can be saved by relationship with Christ mm-hmm. and good communication. You need those two. That's right. You need those two because in Christ you have love, you have peace, you have joy, you have happiness, you have togetherness, you have all those other things because people will come to try to rip your marriage apart. They, mm-hmm. they will literally try to do this and, 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 and won't think nothing of it. And right. they'll go on their merry way, but they've just planted a seed and dropped it there. And now it's watering because now your words are feeding on it. It's feeding it. So yeah. it's just allowing it to grow. Yeah. Am I right, baby? That is right. It's amazing. Everything that you're saying is, is creating pictures in my mind. Mm-hmm. And I'm imagining standing before God with all of the words that I have said and trying to explain to him. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's really nothing that you can say. You see, I was just speechless right there. There's nothing that you can really say because you had ample time to get it right. So from this point on, let's make a decision. We're not going to bash our spouse because do you want to know something? When you bash your spouse, you're bashing yourself. So if I go and I say something about him, and this is why I don't tolerate talking about your spouse outside of your marriage. You don't do that. Because mm-hmm. if I go and talk about him, you know how foolish that looks? I'm talking about myself. Because we are one. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And when you understand the power of oneness, it's like, mm I need to cover you and I yeah. need to love you. Yes. So some good things that you can apply in your marriage Think about when you're praising God. God loves for you to praise him. He loves for you to tell him how wonderful he is. God, I love you so much. He loves that. It does. It puts a smile on his face. So then imagine what it does to your spouse when you look at them and say, you're the greatest man in the world. And you're the greatest woman in the world. It makes you feel good. It does. Because they see your bad and your good. Mm-hmm. But to still love me. In spite of. In spite of. And say something good about me in spite of. And then take the negative stuff into prayer. That's amazing. Do that for them. Because I'm, I'm a, baby, there, there has been things that I have not mentioned to you. But I have been in prayer with God about concerning you and then out of nowhere you'll pop up and say well i've been feeling like this or thinking Mm -hmm. about this and i think that i should do things this way and that is a prayer answered because i never did tell her about it all i did was communicate to my lord and savior jesus Mm -hmm. christ and he worked that out so prayer communication a relationship will help you save Mm -hmm. your marriage it will help you. Yeah. God will supply your your relationship with the love, which we just got to put forth that effort. That effort. And and, and, and that's key. It, it, marriages work. It's not it's not easy. It's 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 not all the time glamorous. But if you can look back where you started, right. and then look where you are now, you can be joy joyful about it because you see what God has brought you through right. and the growth you two have made together. That's how you build an empire. It is. That's how you build it an is. empire by growing together in God because he is, is more important mm-hmm. than anything. You need him to keep your marriage together. That's right. And then always remember, when you walk outside, you feel the wind. You can't see it, but you feel it. In your marriage, you can't see the Holy Spirit (laughs) sitting right here. He's right here in between us. Yes, he is. You can't see him, but he's there. He's there. You just have to be conscious of him, just like you're conscious of the wind outside. Yes. Just like you're conscious of all these other things that you can't see, but you can hear, but you can feel. Baby, that's a good illustration. It is. That's very good. Good. God just gave me that right there. (laughs) (laughs) That's good. So remember, Matthew 12 and 36, every idle word 
you will be held accountable for. Mm -hmm. Proverbs 18 and 21, life and death are in the power of the tongue. The tongue. Speak life to your spouse. You speak life to yourself. I'm Mr. I'm Mrs. Maris. Maris. And, and we, we are interwoven, interwoven with, with God. God. Thank you. Bye-bye.